with our winners and losers so far from NFL free agency. Well, we're going we to let our special guest, since he's been gone for a minute, I want to hear you got your hat on. Who you guys your winners and losers from free agency? Um, I'll start off with the Buffalo Bills. I think they're a loser right now in free agency. They lost a lot of players, a lot of key players in key spots, like, you know, Jordan Poyer and Mitch Morse, you know, Gabe Davis is gone. Like, they lost a lot of pivotal players that, you know, played a lot of snaps for them this year. So, for me right now, that's probably one of the top losers, you know, in the free agency uh, period. Okay. Y'all want to just do all lose, then come back to the winners? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Box Office. Okay. My loser, and I thought that was a good one. The Bills, I think, have been a loser so far. My loser is the Dallas Cowboys. And the reason the Dallas Cowboys are losers is because they lost Tony Pollard. They lost their left tackle, Tyron Smith. Uh, Not sure if uh, Gilmore's going to be back. They've signed nobody. They signed Eric Kendricks, who's like 85 years old. So I'm not impressed by that. Uh, Honestly, I don't know what the Cowboys are doing. I thought the Cowboys would go get Saquon or Derrick Henry. They didn't get either one of them. Um, maybe you you think they go get a Calvin Ridley to become the number two there with C.D. Lamb. They didn't do that. Um, they got to pay Dak all this money just to continue being uh, average at the quarterback position. I, I, I don't think that the Cowboys have enough urgency and they are doing enough. Uh, I think they got worse overnight, <laughs> and I think that uh, Dallas can only get so much better through the draft. And uh, I don't like what what's setting up for the Dallas Cowboys, especially in that division where the Eagles got much better in my, my, my opinion. So the Dallas Cowboys are the big losers for me right now. All right. See Yvonne, what you got. Mr. Mr. Box Office, didn't Jerry Jones say that he was all in during this free agency period? He did. And, and, and another thing is he, he keeps talking about how he wants to win a Super Bowl before he dies again or another Super Bowl before he dies. But honestly, I really think at this point, Jerry cares more about the popularity of the team more than anything, uh, and more than actually winning. <laughs> so uh, it is what it is. I don't know what Jerry's talking about. He's just talking at this stage. So they're losers to me. Okay, Mr. See what you got. All right, man, I, I actually got two losers, and they both in the NFC East. Uh, mm. The first one is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, for everything box office just said, man, um, everybody, I think, going to free agency just knew that Jerry was going to throw the house and get Derrick Henry and bring him down there. I um I thought it was going to be Derrick Henry, not not Saquon, but um I, I, really, I really thought he was going to do that, but he ends up letting Pollard leave, and – he didn't go get Derrick Henry, Saquon, any of the big name running backs. What is he trying to do? What are they trying to do? Like I said, he said he was all in. Like you said, uh, like you said, Marlon, you said he was all in. This is not all in. We've seen Jerry go all in. Jerry spends bread. He spent no bread at all in the first three days of free agency. Uh, I don't know if he's just kind of accepting it. I know he said he wants to win another Super Bowl. Uh, I don't think he said before I die, <laughs> but I think we all that was the inference that we we all got from him that he wants to do it before he died because he's old and you know he's looking like he's close to the age. But uh, um, he um he didn't do any any favors for himself. I don't know who who did they sign for their running back. They haven't. They haven't. <laughs> they had to sign the uh, sign the running back. So I don't even know who's out there anymore. Um. That they could possibly sign. This is this is this is ridiculous. I thought I, I thought they would have uh, tried to at least get on like Aaron Jones or somebody, but he went, he's gone. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do, man. Maybe sign Zeke back. Who knows? Cam Cam Akers or somebody like that. You know. Yeah. So in, the, in, in other words, Minnesota's not gonna keep Cam Akers, so maybe somebody like that. Yeah. So in other words, they're not gonna have no help for Dak as far as a running back. I know Pollard was their big their big uh. They thought that was going to be their future Pollard last year, but they didn't. Uh, luckily, they didn't extend and um, give him a big contract last year. But 
I mean, uh, just looking at it, I, I, I got them as my first biggest loser. Then the second one is the New York Giants. <clears throat> uh, you let Saquon leave. What's your backup plan? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> All these free agents out there, man, they, they didn't make a move either. Daniel Jones is terrible. You already – the only thing that you had on your offense basically was Saquon Barkley. He was the only thing that you had that for sure on your offense. When he was healthy, he was your offense, and you let him just walk for nothing. I mean, yes. franchise tag the man or something. Don't just let him leave. Don't just let him leave for nothing, man. That's ridiculous. But um, it, it, we've seen them do this over and over again. They're a poorly run franchise at this point, so I'm not surprised. Um, so, you know, those are my two biggest losers. Okay. Wait, wait. Was that? Okay. Y'all can hear me? Y'all good? Oh, you yeah, good? Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, this is easy for me. And Malcolm got his hat on right now. It's the Minnesota Vikings. What in the hell are they doing? <laughs> I don't – and look, and y'all know I'm not even, like, big on Kirk Cousins. But I'm like, you got Justin Jefferson there. You drafted Jordan Addison. You got to wake up TJ Hawkinson. I'm thinking you all in. You all in. Now you get rid of Cam Makers. You're pretty much going to get rid of Cam Makers. And Ty Taylor is still there. Both of those guys are 25 and under. You go out and sign a guy. And I'm not knocking Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, I like Aaron Jones. He's older than Ezekiel Elliott. What are we <laughs> doing? What are we doing with the Minnesota Vikings? You go out and you get um Sam Darnold to replace Kirk Cousins as of now. Crazy. It's, it's just not making sense to me. We saw what Detroit was last year. I expect them to be better this year coming. Man, you look at a team like the Bears. They have the number one pick, the number nine pick in the draft. They should be getting better this year. I don't know what the Vikings do. You saw what Jordan jo Love made the playoffs. The Vikings are really treading on losing Justin Jefferson. We're hearing the trade rumors now. I just think the Vikings are in real trouble. When I look at a team and I said to myself, if they had Kirk Cousins healthy, Justin Jefferson healthy, they had that roster, maybe they could make a playoff. They may have the first pick in the draft next year. That's how bad I think the Vikings have been so far. So the Vikings by far to me have been the losers as far as offseason so far. Feel me on this, sports junkie. I think the Vikings are so happy they don't have to pay Kirk Cousins no more. I think that that was part of what 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 this what happened and why they didn't they they would it don't it don't seem like they cared that he left, you know. I think they were just tired of paying him, you know. what I'm saying all this guaranteed money, and you know, you didn't even make the playoffs, you know. what I'm saying this year, so it's like, bro, what are you doing? Because he was like, hurt, and, I mean, and yeah, yeah, he, he was hurt. But I'm just and saying, Justin like, Jefferson was hurt a lot of the year. But I think they they were just happy that they don't have to pay him no more. I think they're like, you know what, he was – I guess you could say he was great for them because he's the best thing they had, you know, in some years. But – It's called you know. and, and listen, if they go out there and make a move – I'm talking about as of today. I just look at their roster. You traded for TJ Hawkinson. I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, you're making a run. You're trying to build something. But now Justin Jefferson made one out of Minnesota, and that's your ticket sale guy. That's why they're going to watch him, to watch him play. And if he gets out of there, I mean, it could get bad for them. The Lions are coming. The Packers are coming. And right now, even though – um, who I'm leaving out? The, the, the Bears. The Bears. The Bears, the Bears are going to be young. And they have two top ten picks. So some things are about to change. I think the Vikings, man, they've had a terrible offseason so far. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, First off, I'm not going to let you say that about my Dallas Cowboys America's oh! team. Um, <laughs> Dallas, the oh, Dallas man. Cowboys are not, the Dallas Cowboys are not known for free agency. If you look at the history with the Dallas Cowboys, they don't, Jerry Jones don't spend um, money on those type of players. Yeah, you could the, the latest you could go back and think of is Terrell Owens, Deion Sanders, Brandon Carr. They normally re-sign their players um 
that's what they normally do. If you look at the players that the resign, you they they give Dak big money, Amari Cooper big money, um, their defensive yeah. players big money, Zeke big money. They don't like to spend money on that. They like to get those bargain deals, like they did with Kendricks. Like they got a uh, they. You know, they got some late first. They gave away late first round picks for Stefan Gilmore last season. I know X talked about it off air um, with the Brandon Cook situation. They got late first for uh, late draft picks for Brandon Cooks. They're more like bargain deals. And from what I know from the Cowboys, they weren't planning on spending money on at the running back position because from the direction I see the Dallas Cowboys going right now, I see this team as a past first team where they're just going to air that ball out. And you've seen the success that Dak, Dak had and uh, C.D. Lamb had. And, like, guys like Jake Ferguson have, outside of that damn Green Bay game, they've been uh, one of the top offenses in the league. But as far as my, as far as my losers goes, I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars as my losers because I wouldn't have paid Gabe Davis $39 million for three years. <laughs> um, when you Nobody. look at you, you look at the amount of money that the Jags gave out, I, I think it was two years ago, they gave Christian Kirk 72 million. Like, how is that going for you right now? Then you go and trade to get Mac Jones. What is Trevor Lawrence's job in jeopardy right now? Um, I know they picked up. They gave it. Don't forget they gave the tight end some money too in Jacksonville. Yeah, Yeah. and and I yeah, and I think if I'm wrong, they might have picked a darn savage, but I don't think it's that that much of an impact like that though. And then you gave and you let Calvin Ridley go to the Titans. The thing about the Titans is, man, you gave Calvin Ridley ninety two what ninety two million, ninety two million right or ninety seven million. But, yeah, you didn't want to give, but you Thank didn't want to give. We yeah, gotta but you, off, we got to pick off the Jaguars for not signing him. Yeah, yeah. And the thing with them is, you gave him that money, but you didn't want to give AJ Brown that money, Bye. though. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, and then you rely on Traylon Burks, who's who's not the player I think he's gonna be. And I don't think Gabe Davis is a number one wide receiver like that, though. Like. I just don't see him as a clear cut number one guy. You know, I I just want to rebuttal. I I don't have an issue with the Gabe Davis signing because I think they got way they they spun way less on him than they did on Ridley. And I'm like you, Keo. I don't know what the hell the Tennessee Titans doing. I was about to make them a loser because yeah. I don't I don't like what they've done, and maybe you guys do. I agree with the Cowboys not signing Tony Pollard. I don't let him walk too. He ain't do nothing for y'all. Let him leave. I'm not paying him no money. So I'm not worried about I'm not worried about Tony Pollard. And really, like you just said, you could have signed AJ Brown to that same deal. And AJ Brown has shown he's levels above Calvin Ridley. I, I I don't know what the Titans doing, man. They still got Hopkins too. So we'll they see. Build, they they building looks. around Levis. They building around Levis. And I think by them getting Tony Pollard, it's them telling the NFL we're no longer a power running team anymore. A new co- a new coach. So yeah. you know the change has to happen, I guess. So, so do you guys like the combination of Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins, or you think DeAndre Hopkins is going towards the end of his career now? I think yeah. Tennessee, I think Tennessee is killing him. He still has it. He didn't then have anybody to get the ball to him, and the scheme is terrible. So oh. I think he needs to go somewhere else and he'd be he'd be still DeAndre Hopkins. He hadn't just Forgotten how to catch and forgotten how to great get a lot of yards. It's uh, it's Tennessee. Well, I agree with you. See, he did agree to sign there. We all thought that was a bad move, yeah. but he's but he did sign a two year deal. So this means this upcoming year is his last year in Tennessee. So they'll have Ridley and Hopkins uh for one year together. I'm okay with. I mean, I agree with y'all. They made a mistake not selling Brown, but I mean, I'm okay with them signing Calvin Ridley uh there. I don't know. I don't understand the Gabe Davis move. Gabe Davis, to me, at mm-hmm. times is even a number two. He disappears way too much. Well, this this is what I would say about Calvin Ridley, and it's no knock to Calvin Ridley. I just feel like you could have drafted somebody that could have been better. The way the receivers has been coming in the NFL lately, 
Like, what you giving Calvin Ridley for 92 million? If I'm Jacksonville, I'm not giving that boy 92 million. He didn't show me last year 92 million dollars worth. He had flashes, yeah, sure. He but didn't I show me 60 million. million. <laughs> and the I Mac Jones thing, you this is what I'll say. We've been talking about Trevor Lawrence taking that next step. You didn't put some fire under him. Like, dog, hey, we're not waiting around for you. If you ain't going to get it together, we're going to find somebody at least to push you. I'm not – Mac Jones not going to be the guy. But at least no, try to no. push Trevor Lawrence further because Trevor Lawrence has to take that next step at some point in his career. All right, guys. Let's go to our winners now. Winners. Who you guys got as the winners? Okay. Go ahead, Marlon. Well – my winner, <laughs> I'm gonna say the Houston Texans. I ain't mad at that. That's a good you know, the Neil Hunter big game hunting right there. That that is big game hunting. And the Nico Autry, them, them boys trying to they trying to build a front seven that's that's uh you know championship worthy. Like I, I don't know what D'Amico Ryan's down there doing, but he's making moves, and I like the moves that he's making. Um, I thought they had a chance to get Saquon, you know what I'm saying? I, I saw his name linked to them a few times. I thought, I was like, you know what, that might not be a bad move for Saquon, you know, with the receivers they got and CJ Stroud. Like, I think he would have been the perfect back for the type of system they're running. But hey, I guess they say they're gonna build build the defense first, you know what I'm saying, and, and build around all the other positions on the on the team. But I, I like what the Houston's doing. They are definitely a winner. Okay, I'm going to agree. I think Houston is the big winner so far. Daniil Hunter's been underrated his whole career. Uh, he's got 88 career sacks. I mean, that, it, come on, and he's got plenty left in the tank. Uh, he actually goes back home. He's from Texas, so I, I, I know he probably eyed out the Cowboys or the, or the Texans to get back home. Uh, you put him on the opposite side of Will Anderson, that is nasty for years to come, especially when you don't have to pay Stroud or Al uh, or Willie Anderson yet. Love that move. They signed a veteran running back in uh, Joe Mixon. That's an upgrade. Danico uh, Autry played for my Colts. He's a good underrated defensive tackle. I like what they're doing in Houston, and I'm pissed off there in my division, honestly. Um, it is what it is, though. You got to give them credit. And, and, and I just want to remind everybody, Last year, the Panthers were the first pick. The Texans were the second. And look where both of those teams are now. Like in one year, uh, what the Texans have done, man, they're going to be scary for years to come, and the AFC South might be there. So uh, I think that the Houston Texans have won so far free agency. All right. All right, so let me clear all this up for y'all, man. Houston, while being a good pick, I really like the mix and pick up. The mix and pick up, I think, was a, a big thing for them. Uh, they're not my biggest winners, though. My biggest winners are the Philadelphia Eagles. Oof. Philadelphia Eagles, man. You pick, you pick up Saquon Barkley to solidify that running back position. Now, Swift did a good job this year, in my opinion. He did a good job. But they let him go. I think I think Saquon isn't a clear upgrade over Swift. Uh, when healthy, when healthy, that's the only thing about Saquon. He has to stay healthy. But I think a healthy Saquon, I'll take him any day. I think we all will take him any day over DeAndre Swift. Um, and with them, uh, another little sneaky move they made. They re say they re-signed C.J. Gardner Johnson. Now, yep. I'm um I. I think that that might be what they were missing this year because if you looked at that fall off they had in the second half of the season, it was uh it was a lot to do with the defense, a lot to do with the defense and the defensive attitude over there. One thing that C.J. Gardner Johnson brings to your team is defensive attitude. Uh, him being a saint for a couple of years, I mean, anytime I still like him. I wish we had with Mac Allen got him to be honest with you, but he um he brings that swag that you need to your defense. And I think that they were right for going out there. Now he said some harsh things on his way out of Philadelphia. So was, I'm not I'm not sure if the city's gonna embrace him. I think he said the worst thing about Philadelphia was the people <laughs> as he left. Uh I don't I don't know, man. Um also they all they added the uh former jet pass rusher, pass rusher Bryce Huff, and he's nice. He's sneaky nice. 
All right. So I think that they shared up their defense and actually got somebody back there that could run the ball. Very good. Can pass out the backfield very well. Um, so I think that they were my biggest winner. They made two moves that really just made their team better. Made their team better for our already double digit winning team Super Bowl two years ago. Um, I think that they did they they made themselves back right at the top of that NFC East hunt. So you know it's gonna be them and the Cowboys again. And uh they they did they did that by hurting an NFC East opponent, the Giants, who um I believe Saquon only signed with the Eagles just to piss the Giants off for not paying him. You know what I mean? Because that's something that I would have done. So I it's, it's, I, I, it's definitely petty. Yeah, I would have done that, man. I I would have called. I would have called Philadelphia. I'd have called Philadelphia and Dallas and tried and asked them how much they was willing to give me. <laughs> to I, your to your point about C.J. Gardner Johnson, uh, trendsetter. I think the other year when he was there, they didn't really want to pay him at that point, so uh-huh. that's why they let him walk. But yeah. they, they, they this was kind of a sign saying we messed up not right. paying you then, so we're bringing you back now. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I agree with you. But, I, but I'll, I'll throw another team in the mix just because I, I love what Houston's done. I think Houston was on fire this offseason. They're trying to take that next step. But I'll go a different direction. Some people love it. Some people don't. I think Keo doesn't I like it. But I'm definitely with what Baltimore did. What Baltimore did, they said, you know what? We're trying to win. They were the best team as far as record-wise last year, 13-4. and four. They bring in the number two leading rusher from last year, Derrick Henry. You know they want to run the football. You know they want to be physical. What I love about this move and getting Derrick Henry is them zone reads, you're going to have to make a decision. You're yep. going to have to make a decision. Don't make the wrong <laughs> Either one. you're going to get beat up by Derrick Henry or you better <laughs> deal with Lamar on that end. And I just think it's a great fit. Now, they still have moves to be made. I don't like that they lost Patrick Queen. I think him and Roquan Smith were big time together. That didn't help them. But that's what kept is, them from being my winner. <laughs> but this is going to this is gonna be scary. If they can land a wide receiver in this draft and it could pan out, man. You're hearing Keon Coleman dropping. If they can land somebody like a Keon Coleman late in the first round, it could be scary in Baltimore to have to deal with those guys. You still got Mark Andrews. You still got Isaiah Likely, two beasts at the tight end position. You throw in Zay Flowers, who's big time as far as speed. If they can get a guy like Keon Coleman, that's the guy I would target if it's me. I think Baltimore could be real. Even Travis Kelsey. If y'all watch the Kelsey's episode, he was like, Man, <laughs> this is gonna be tough on everybody. So I'm going Baltimore outside of what you guys just said. Would you have let LBJ go? Oh, uh, yes, yes. I'm not. I, that that that's like a sign that doesn't really move they the needle for me. OBJ. They overpaid OBJ. They overpaid. Yeah, like that. Him. Yeah, that doesn't. I mean, if you bring him back, you don't bring him back. That doesn't move the needle to me. Um, the main thing is, look, Gus Edwards is a decent back he's not Derrick Henry no. we're not about to do that well, you know he you know he left he went to the charge yeah I know he went to the charge what I'm saying they let him go and he's physical but he's not Derrick Henry so you got to deal with Derrick Henry I just think the way you got Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry you got to make a decision and that's where it's gonna be tough and then you got Zay Jones over the top that that could be scary for defenses especially if you you're a Madden fan. You don't want to play against that. 